Perth might be one of the most remote cities in the world, but it is working hard to prove it's a city not to be overlooked. Australia's fourth largest metropolis is blessed with rich natural resources, and its unique location makes it a valuable gateway to Southeast Asia. Once known for just being a mining city, Perth's newfound and enviable quality of life and business opportunities have, in recent years, enticed successful professionals and creatives from the East Coast to try their luck in Western Australia. One of them is architect Nick Brunston, winner of the 2015 National Emerging Architect Prize, who decided to swap Melbourne for Perth six years ago. I lived in Melbourne for 24 years and I just think Perth is absolute like God's country. Like it's it's wonderful in terms of the thing, in terms of the opportunity that you're currently presented here. They talk about the tyranny of distance, the fact that it's it's both a giver and a taker, but I think Perth has this great opportunity or chance at being less and less influenced by interstate neighbours or other people and actually kind of really developing our own culture and our own sort of, you know, brand. Perth has been in constant motion over the last decade, triggered by the recent mining boom. The economic push has enabled the development of ambitious urban renewal projects, changing this city's dynamics drastically. Amongst them is the somewhat controversial $440 million redevelopment of the Swan River waterfront with the opening of the Elizabeth Quay in January 2016. The way that Perth has grown up is that the land uses are separated. So we have this sense of a CBD where we come to work and the suburbs where we live. And the projects that are happening now is mixing that up a bit and that's really good because the separation sort of created this, at five o'clock everyone cleared out and they went home. Whereas now it's like, well, there's lots of reasons to stay. We didn't have something that sort of said, this is Perth. Not in the way that many other cities have had. You know, our beaches are gorgeous, but they look like a lot of other beaches. And now we're going to have this space that's got some artwork in it that's very interesting. And as the buildings form up, hopefully we just get those sort of iconic shots of people go, oh, that's Perth. So if the news is being read and there's an article on Perth, we'll go, oh, yeah, that's Perth. Another extensive urban development is the sinking of the railway as part of the Perth City Link project, which will connect the long-separated Northbridge neighbourhood with the city's central business district. This once unloved and notoriously seedy neighbourhood is now Perth's main entertainment hub, with a rich collection of museums and theatres, as well as independent retailers and a vibrant nightlife. This is the location where Miles Hall decided to build Alex Hotel, together with four fellow entrepreneurs. The boutique hotel, which aims to create a sense of home in the middle of the hustle and bustle of the city, opened its doors in May 2015. I think there's some really exciting regeneration happening in Perth, particularly in and around the area of Alex Hotel, in that it was a neighbourhood that was quite neglected and uh, I think as people recognise the importance of a city and a hub, uh, coming back into those areas and finding new activities and new sites to revitalise. For us, I think what's on the outside of Alex Hotel is just as important as what's inside. Uh, we all felt that when we travel and stay in hotels, you want to stay in a place that really gives you a really good sense of a neighbourhood and district. So for us being in this location, with everything happening out on the street, we, we did want to bring a little bit of that inside, but still have a respite where there's a sense of comfort and we didn't want to feel like you were sitting in a showroom or a cookie cutter hotel from anywhere else in the world. We wanted you to feel when you stay here, you are in Perth, you're in Western Australia, there's beautiful blue sky most of the day, and that's what we wanted to celebrate in here and the feeling and the colours and the light that we bring into the hotel to reflect that and uh, really make it a distinctly West Australian place. But with opportunities come challenges. The city has seen an enormous population growth and the number is expected to rise to 3.5 million by 2050. The government is working hard to reduce car dependency, which is currently leading to traffic congestion issues. And while the city's growth spurt has led to a burst of modern offices and skyscrapers, the city's heritage buildings were being neglected. The 140-year-old state buildings were empty for almost two decades, but reopened their doors following an ambitious renovation in October 2015. They now house the head-turning Como the Treasury Hotel, 
and an inspiring mix of independent retailers and hospitality offerings. It's underused properties like these that inspired architect Nick Brunston to set up the Space Market project, supported by the city of Perth. The project matches people and premises and turns unused buildings into mixed-use spaces and workplaces for startups. I was walking around the city and noticing all the first floors that were kind of dusty and full of boxes and seeing an opportunity there. The Werner Chambers is a ballroom that we found and had been vacant for 15 years. It was built in 1897 and at the time it was declared the finest building in the Commonwealth. What we did was we wanted to preserve the character of the space because it's really quite unique. We didn't touch any of the walls, we preserved the height of the space, we preserved all the existing materials, we actually preserved areas where there were signs of damage and you know, things coming through the roof. So it's, it's about the careful and economic you know, rehabilitation of these forgotten bits of the city. Post boom, it's time for Perth to engage its cultural and artistic side. The Fringe World Festival and International Arts Festival take over the city every year. But there are many permanent creative initiatives visible in the city. The majority of the city's street art was commissioned by FORM, a non-profit cultural organisation that collaborates with international, local and indigenous artists to turn previously overlooked streets and city spaces into more lively places. Forum's latest project is to turn an old freight shed in the suburb of Claremont into a creative hub for artists, which is scheduled to open later this year. There's been a lot of change, I think, over the last decade in the mindset of the people of Perth in terms of how they see their city and their role within it. And I think that is one of the most exciting changes that we've seen. Um, we've gone from people, you know, seeing it as Dolesville and having that tag, you know, 10 years ago um, and feeling almost a bit despondent about it to recognising that actually it's up to us to change that and we do have the capacity to change that. So that momentum is there and I think the challenge for us now is really to make sure that we do embed that programming, that soft infrastructure, arts and culture, the things that will bring our communities to life within those spaces, that is now our challenge to make sure that that is in place and that that momentum can continue so that that development really shapes a really positive and vibrant future. In recent years, Perth has been reinventing itself while maintaining its distinct laid-back personality. Developments like the new City Beach Pavilion, the Perth Arena and the city's 60,000 capacity stadium scheduled to open in 2018 will continue to drive this transformation, hopefully creating more opportunities for entrepreneurs, retailers and young creatives. I think there's always been a really great entrepreneurial spirit here in Perth. Um, in that we have had to forge our own way. There is a fair distance between us and any other city, not just in Australia, but within the world. And so you really are forced here to create something. And I think the challenge for Perth is to keep those creative-minded people that want to make a difference and celebrate them. And we need to nurture the people here and keep people remaining. And we can only do that by doing more and doing things better and, um, and being ourselves. From Monocle, in Perth, I'm Pauline Den Hartog-Jager.